A four-story wall of water that only rises once in 1,300 years was recorded off the west coast of Canada. Some people blame waves like this for disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle. Rogue waves can get strong enough to sink container ships and oil rigs. The Canadian water monster didn't hurt anyone, but it did become a sensation. And it looks like we're about to see even higher and more powerful rogue waves in the future. The team of Marine Labs, the company that operates the buoy that got caught in the Uculet wave, couldn't believe the data they saw. A huge force came out of the blue, pulled the buoy down, and then set it up to a peak before taking it even deeper. They thought it must be a rogue wave, so they sent the data to a scientist at the University of Victoria who specializes in these beauties. They analyzed the data and confirmed it was indeed not a technical mistake. The wave officially became the most extreme rogue wave ever officially recorded, as it was three times the height of waves around it. Scientists have reported seeing giant waves coming out of the blue for centuries, but no one really believed them. Back in 1826, a French scientist and naval officer was crossing the Indian Ocean on his ship, the Astrolabe. They got in a terrible storm and saw several waves over 98 feet tall. It's almost as tall as a 10-story building. The crew lost one of its members, but the four of them, including the captain, made it to land and shared what they saw. But back then, scientists were sure waves couldn't be taller than 30 feet. Everyone took their story as a tall tale. Pun intentional. Over a century later, a cargo ship, the MS München, mysteriously disappeared. People believed it to be unsinkable, just like the Titanic. So it was a real shock that all that was left of it was one lifeboat. When experts analyzed the damage, they concluded that it must have been hit by a wave that was around 65 feet high. Witnesses shared many other stories of giant waves coming out of nowhere, but scientists officially recognized the first rogue wave only in 1995. They went down in history as the Doppner wave, or the New Year's wave. This monster on the North Sea that was 84 feet tall hit the Norwegian gas platform Doppner on New Year's Day. It was twice larger than the wave surrounding it. The rig was built to withstand waves up to 64 feet tall and had the most advanced sensors for its time. The wave wasn't like any other type of wave they'd studied before. So they had to admit rogue waves were real and gave them an official definition. It's a wave more than twice as tall as others around it. It can pop up lightning fast in a stormy sea or show up out of nowhere in calm waters. These waves have steep sides and a deep trough below and look like a wall of water rising out of the sea. They're so intense that they can even swallow up rescue helicopters trying to do their job. In 2007, America's National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration made a list of 50 historical maritime tragedies that were most likely caused by rogue waves. Some of the events on the list happen not in the open water, but in lakes. Lake Superior has something that's got the name Three Sisters. It is a series of three large waves, one after another. The second wave covers the ship's decks before the first one is gone. The third wave jumps in and adds extra water. These Three Sisters overload the ship. There's a theory that this phenomenon took down the freighter Edmund Fitzgerald in 1975. There are two main theories trying to explain how rogue waves happen. First, we've got the linear addition theory. Imagine waves cruising through the ocean at their own speeds. When these waves cross paths, they team up and become stronger to turn into a rogue wave. Then there's the nonlinear focusing theory. It says waves like to roll in groups, and when they spend time together, they exchange some energy. Sometimes, this energy exchange turns into a rogue wave. To predict the formation of these freaky waves, scientists would need an innovative radar system to keep a constant eye on the waves near a boat. They'd collect all the data and put in a math model that would create a real-time picture of what the ocean surface looks like at that very moment. This model would need to do new calculations of the surface situation every five minutes. It would let the crew know if there were any extreme waves coming up in the next several minutes. Such a system doesn't exist yet but there is a huge progress in this direction. Scientists from the University of Melbourne went on an expedition to Antarctica and found out that strong winds play a big role in the creation of rogue waves. 
it looks like they're caused by a mix of strong winds and the random way waves move and interact with each other. This idea was tested in labs before, but now they've proven it happens in real oceans too. To study these waves, the scientists use special 3D cameras. These cameras work like human eyes, taking lots of images in a row to create a detailed 3D picture of the ocean surface. It showed that rogue waves happen more often when waves are young, which means they're just starting to form and are more affected by the wind. When strong winds blow over young waves, they make the waves taller, longer, and faster, but not evenly. Some waves steal energy from nearby waves and grow much bigger, which is how rogue waves form. The scientists noticed these giant waves happened about once every six hours. They recorded no rogue waves in calmer seas, when the wind doesn't have as much influence. Scientists are concerned that rogue waves may happen more often in the future, because there's more energy in the atmosphere and ocean. It looks like rogue waves can be much more powerful than scientists ever thought. They managed to create the famous Doppner wave in a lab for the first time in 2018. This helped them study these mysterious waves up close and showed that their secret is in how they form. We think of waves rolling gently on a beach, but the waves in this study happen in open water when waves from different directions meet. When waves come together from far apart directions, they push the water upward, creating what's called a partially standing wave or a cross wave. This can happen when two seas meet, or when wind directions suddenly change, like during a hurricane. The study found that the bigger the angle between the meeting waves, the taller the cross wave becomes. Normally, when a wave breaks, it forms a white foamy top, and that's where it stops growing. But if a wave is formed by water coming from many directions, it can keep growing even after breaking. These special waves can grow to be twice as steep while breaking, which is already much bigger than normal waves. And if you add up all the growth from waves coming together, they can become four times steeper than what anyone thought was possible. This discovery could change the way we build things, like wind turbines or oil platforms in the ocean to make them safe. Right now, many designs don't fully account for these huge multi-directional waves. Now, they seem to have a lot of similarities, but rogue waves aren't the same as tsunamis. Tsunamis happen when there's a big shift in water, like an earthquake, volcanic eruption, or landslide. They mess with the entire water column. At sea, you might not even notice a tsunami cruising beneath you, but near the shore, as it hits shallow waters, those waves can shoot up to crazy heights. Rogue waves are formed at the surface level, although sometimes they can form deep below, and these are called rogue internal waves. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.